So hey guys, I'm back with another video. So tonight's video is yet again another Chama Chats video podcast edition. So by the title, we're going to be talking about how rap music made everybody thoughts. Now, I have to put the disclaimer that I don't necessarily mean this in a negative way, even though there are negative aspects that derive from this conversation. I'm not labeling certain individuals as thoughts, but I think thought culture is a real thing. And I think that people are open and honest and even prideful about it. So I don't think it's too taboo to discuss. If you're offended by the word thought or thought culture or thought music, then click off because this is going to be a very uncomfortable video for you. So hey y'all, today's video sponsor is Zovu. Zovu wishes to provide customers with socially friendly products that are both satisfying and valuable in terms of taste, smell, and using scenarios. Their brand focuses on disposable and pod devices via vapes. Now, I will make the disclaimer that this product is for users 18 plus and viewers are encouraged to use their products to their own discretion. Zovu sent me their drag bar vapes, which come in many different flavors, colors, and designs. So opening the drag bar, I noticed that they had a solid and secure packaging from the boxing to the plastic covering. Now these vapes are thick in size, but they also do have a slimmer model. The drag bar is a new disposable model with a liquid capacity of 18 milliliters. It also features an adjustable air function for the user's preference. The drag bars also have a silicone mouthpiece for sanitation and to prevent the liquid from volatizing. So the flavors that I received were pineapple grapefruit and passion fruit guava. And y'all know I'm not a vapor, but I did have my manager try them out per usual. So he enjoyed these vapes and said that the flavors were great and the ability to adjust the smoke cloud was ideal as well. So if you all are interested in these products, please check the link in my bio and head over to their site, izovu.com. That is I-Z-O-V-O-O.com to check out the rest of their catalog. So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So the reason why I wanted to discuss this is because I was having a conversation with my music management and some of my friends as of recently and we've been trying to figure out a rollout for my music career. Now I am 25 years old I like to listen to all types of music but particularly female rap has had me in a chokehold and that is obviously because I'm also pursuing that specific demographic and genre however the topic that keeps being brought up in these conversations is image being distinct and not trying to blend in and also giving the people what they want and what will sell let's be real we are in the era of thought culture and it's being expressed through female rap artists more than anything else. You can argue that all of these women have the right to portray themselves in whatever light they see fit. I'm not arguing against that as I do agree with that, but I do think it's fair to label it as what it is without sugarcoating it. All of these ladies from Cardi B, Saweetie, Meg Thee Stallion, City Girls, Nicki Minaj, Lotto, and pretty much everyone that is on the come up that has a name or a buzz floating around but may not be mainstream, all participate in selling sex through rap music. None of these ladies can deny that so there's no point defending them as if we're speaking down on them because we're not we're being honest so i think that this has allowed this narrative and movement to be overtly sexual in the lens of women who are not rappers as well so the average everyday woman has now become a lot more in tune privy to or comfortable with displaying themselves in a certain way regardless if they are truly a thought or not just because this imagery is seen as trendy because rap slash hip-hop is so huge right now all everyone can look at is what rap rappers are doing, both male and female rappers. But I do think that because we don't just have one female rapper who is the sexy and super sexual and vulgar rapper, and then all of the other ones have different traits or characteristics or appeals, this has now really influenced a lot of women and girls worldwide. I feel like back in the day, all of the mainstream female artists had their own thing. And by thing, I mean, they had their own specialty. Of course, you had Foxy Brown and Lil' Kim being a little bit more vulgar in the way how they presented themselves. We love and respect them. But you also had Lauren Hill who had her own style, Missy Elliott who had her own style, Salt and Pepper had their own style, and so forth. We have lost the gem of variety in mainstream markets because we're in a microwavable society that is only happy when people are blending in and doing the same thing. Hence why if you look at any female artists, whether they're mainstream, have a buzz, or just starting out, they're kind of all looking, talking, dressing, and being the same. And I'm not saying that back in the 90s there was no such thing as vulgar female rappers. I'm just saying not all of them were. And like I said, this has now influenced the livelihood of the average everyday girl. And I think it's very interesting to look at. So I've broken this video down into one overall main talking point. 
So without further ado, let's get right into this video. So my main talking point is what exactly are these rappers doing? So I have really been consuming a lot of female rap media over the last year that I've been, I guess you can say, pursuing rap music. I have one song out, it's called Ballin'. I will link it down below and you guys can check it out and let me know what you think. But like I stated in the introductory monologue, I thought of this idea when I was planning to drop music for the remainder of this year and trying to figure out how to roll out my music. Now I will say what I have in my corner that some other other upcoming artists may not have is that I already have a following on YouTube. So some of you will support me even if you don't like the music. Some of you will support me because you're Nigerian and I'm Nigerian. Some of you will support me because you love my content and my channel. Some of you will support me just because you genuinely like the music. And some of you will support me just because you come across one of my videos and listen to the entire video and like my snippets at the end of my video and want to hear more. So I've used this last year or so to preview music just to see what people would say and what the feedback would be. And because I am a commentator you don't really see my face often i've temporarily eradicated the physical aspect so when you're hearing my songs you're just hearing the song you're not seeing what i'm wearing what gestures i may be making and what choreography i may be doing because honestly y'all i'm still in the beginning process now my song ballin does have visuals it's not an official music video but i did go to a local music platform that allows you to put out a freestyle or a full-blown single to promote your music and i spent a lot of time trying to figure out what to do for that visual and initially i wasn't going to address this but for the sake of this video and conversation I will so my wardrobe was not supposed to look how it looked I had a custom outfit made but I did not give her my sizes and I didn't try it on until the day of so it ended up being extremely too tight and showing way more skin than I wanted however I do work out and I think I look good so I said F it I'm gonna wear it anyway I didn't have a plan B it wasn't the seamstress she did a great job it was well made especially how fast she did it and she delivered it very fast as well but I did get some comments that didn't like what I had on and basically said that I look like the rest I wasn't offended I could see where people made that point, but I never said I was against being sexy or showing a little something either. So I think within this generation, this imagery is not as shocking, but I do agree that the imagery is repetitive and I'm even someone who participated or fell for the okie doke. So I understand that the female artists around me are super sexy these days and I'm in their peer group. It's not like I'm 40 years old and starting a rap career. Most of these ladies are actually older than me. So of course my eyes, my taste, my interests are geared towards what everyone else is doing because I'm a part of that demographic. So side note, I know I speak a lot on good topics. I'm educated and I can be very stern with my position on certain topics. But at the end of the day, I'm still someone of this generation who likes, falls for, and participates in the same stuff as everybody else. Just not to the same extent, if you ask me. Don't dehumanize me. I promise I speak from experience and not judgment. So moving forward, it was within that video doing so well on Instagram and even on YouTube that I questioned how my next rollout will be because my crutch in music is bars and versatility. That's what I want to be known for. The physical aspect to my talent doesn't matter as much to me, but I do understand it matters a lot in mainstream. So to answer what female rappers are doing, the short answer is that they're basically selling sex through lyrics and promoting racy, vanity-based imagery to make money. And that can be shortened to thought culture or thought music. Now, obviously the word thought has a negative connotation, but if you take this commentary as honest and educational and not demeaning and personal, you'll understand that all of these women knowingly without force and happily participate in thought music. Thought music has become an item because as women, we have gassed it up, made this okay, and also adopted it into young womanhood. Men have also helped to expedite this as well. So I'm not saying this was nothing before, but the way that it's being done now is not considered as shameful or behind the scenes that it was years ago. I could do a whole lyrical breakdown of many of the songs put out by these artists. However, I think it's self-explanatory that they're using their looks and body to sell sex through music to resonate with women women and with men. And I'm not sure if we want to use the word empower, but I know not every woman is empowered by lyrics like you effing with some wet ass poom poom. I think the girls are also dumbing down the expectations for female artists because I don't care what anyone says. It's not hard to write a song about sex. It's not hard to think about that one time that you had an amazing sexual experience and put it in writing. Chances are you can go to the group chat with you and your homegirls from the night after you and your pretty pink pulsing piping hot punishing put it on a pedestal pussy was pounding and penetrated by a pulsing piping penis and copy and paste all of the sentences and paragraphs that you wrote to your homegirls and put it into a song. I'm just being real. And I know not all of the songs are sex based, but the song could be about being a boss or whatever. And the imagery is still going to be selling sex. The imagery is going to be thought culture. So let's further talk about the lyrics and the overall imagery. It goes down to the fashion. It goes down to the gestures. It goes down to the connotation or reputation. It goes down to the performance at concerts and what is acceptable 
there. So the fashion is pretty much Instagram boutique clothes in which everything either has slits, cuts, tight, mesh or sheer, spandex or stretchy, and leaves little to nothing to the imagination. And to each their own on what you want to wear, but when people categorize this as thought wear, it's always this group of women that feels so offended as if calling clothes that are considered stripper uniforms anything but thought wear is wrong. These girls aren't wearing turtlenecks and floor length skirts with britches underneath. I can see your areola, I can see your butt cheek, I can pretty much see your unwaxed hairs on your poom poom, so we have to call it what it is. And again, to each their own, it's just an observation. And this is not just in American societies, but pretty much global civilizations everywhere. Women who expose a lot of their bodies are usually considered a certain type of woman. I'm not saying that directly makes someone a thought, but what I am saying is the overall connotation or perception is thought or nudist or fast girl or hoe or things of that nature. And I hate when I try to be honest and call things what we all as people would consider it and people get mad at me as if I made up the rules. Nobody is speaking against these women. We're just calling it what it is. And that level of dishonesty or extreme offense is the reason why this imagery continues. So the title of this video is How Rap Music Made Everyone Thoughts. And some of you are going to take that too literal and say that we have to listen to different types of rap music in order to not be victims of this imagery in our faces or that rap music existed beyond what is considered new school and consumed by millennials and Gen Z. I mean, those are obvious, but let's be real. Rap music has a huge chokehold and influence on young women and girls, and it's not just the music and the lyrics. It's the overall physical components of what these girls are known for. Growing up, most of us aspired to be like a Beyonce or Raven Simone or Sierra or Brandy and Rihanna. All of those ladies presented themselves in ranges that were somewhat modest all the way up to respectfully sexy. Now, Rihanna did definitely push the envelope a few times, I must say. Anyway, so when I was a kid, I didn't see as much overt sexualization like the kids do now. And I'm not that far away from the generation of teenagers who are now looking at different sets of examples. Black celebrities when I was a kid in the early 2000s were not dressing like this. We're not making music like this. And we're not gassing each other up to continue this behavior like the girls are doing today. And that's not shade. That's just honest facts. So I'm also coming from a place of concern that your 13 year old daughter's role model, or at the very least, the girls of her generation are women whose content should be considered explicit or X rated or only consumed by adults. As a kid, it was hard to get access to even see music videos with all the booty shaking, titty bouncing, poom poom slapping, and even girl on girl action that is easily available today. Part of it is because yes, we grew up with technology, but most of us didn't have a smartphone as a young teenager that could do what the phones can do now. And part of it is because content of that nature was only available for adults who either paid for it or went to environments in which it was happening. Nowadays, young women and girls are feeding into thought culture and becoming it and embodying it at younger ages. But when you say this, people like to tell you that women should be able to do what they want. But what about the kids? What about your 11 year old little cousin who was singing the WAP song with all of her friends on Snapchat, but may not understand what exactly she's saying because she's 11. And even for the women who are my age in their early and mid 20s, some of us are dressing more sexy, taking more sexy or explicit photos and posting them publicly and even doing things that we wouldn't think to do because this culture of thought music from all of these mainstream female artists and even other people, let's just not only blame the artists, has given the majority of women a green light or a pass to go so hard at it. I'm a victim myself. I've never had much of an issue with women using their sex appeal and good looks to have a career that benefited them and their families because why would I be mad at that? However, I think the side effects is that because select groups of women have shown how lucrative it is, thousands of other women have seen how successful some women have become from making this their primary selling point. And a lot of morals, standards, common sense, and decency has gone out of the window as a subset. I mean, there are women who will drop their kids off at school and next to nothing, but when you tell them about themselves and how inappropriate that is for that environment, now you're being dragged for shaming another woman or minding some else's business. Why can't people have a say in the level of decorum someone presents in certain environments? Kids don't have to be exposed to adult content just because adult content has been made a lot easier and more open for adults to participate in such content and for kids to access. We keep blurring the lines through music, through fashion, through mannerisms and the gestures and then wonder why everybody keeps falling into that culture. I like to watch performances and music videos and I'm still going to support the girls because I just am. I am 
an adult with a good head on my shoulders and I know how to differentiate music and art from the real world. So yes, I'll be supporting. Yet yeah, I'll be real and say from watching a lot of these music videos and just the social media pages of these female artists, even outside of rap, they are all pushing the same agenda. So many artists like to rap about how good their poom poom is, how talented they are sexually, how desirable their body is, and how their image of being a bad bitch or a boss bitch supersedes everybody else. Am I mad at it? No, because let's be real. I like some hard bars when it comes to that. But for some people, they have made it their primary and only image, their primary and only selling point. And as much as I think these songs are kind of necessary to the culture, because it does have an authentic representation to women who do naturally possess and participate in that, we can't act like this same imagery is not also damaging. And what makes it damaging is not even the obvious. What makes it damaging is one, all of them and some of the songs, including myself, are pushing certain narratives. And two, there is no distinction between adult content being consumed by children whatsoever anymore. It's like the adults have lost their sauce in being adults. Turning 18 and turning 21 is not even that big of a deal anymore because most kids have already seen, done, participated in, yearned for, or know somebody who has been an active member of thought culture, bad bitch culture, and the most extreme parts of female rap culture in 2022. I think what these girls are doing is, yes, doing what adults should be able to do and have the right to do, but they're also cons to every action that plays along the lines of something that is considered polarizing. I think what gets me is that there are so many women that I've met, whether it's through high school, going to college, or just passing, who I met them as someone not as a prude or a modest or even a church nun, but just somebody who is your average everyday girl. And so many women have developed or changed or altered themselves into posting a certain way or posing a certain way or only hanging around a certain type of girl or dressing a certain way or referring referring to themselves as certain labels, all of which directly derived from female rap thought culture and just thought culture in general. Even Lotto made a song. It was really supposed to be about the fact that, hey, she boldly is going to rap about what she wants to rap about. And I commend her for that. But I also see like, OK, there's a certain image being possessed here that also influences a lot of people. What also gets me is that many of these girls are not even themselves. They are just what social media and society has told them to be. So, yes, the idea of variety and distinction is slowly eradicating because a lot of us are just dumb and not dumb like unintelligent, but dumb and just following what everybody else is doing without having a thought process for ourselves. And some people may be able to argue that what if the majority of women just want this imagery to be the imagery for women? But I'm here to tell you that that's a lie. That sentence only makes sense on the internet because of either who you follow, what you post or engage with, or just what becomes mainstream news for us to think women want to be seen as this. However, there's a huge demographic of young women, I'm even talking ages 18 to 25, who are directly impacted by this, who either despise this movement altogether or like the movement in tidbits, but not all the time, or are even like me, who don't make thought culture the forefront of who I am and what I'm known for, but at the same time, don't really care to be aggressively against it, but can see the detriment it is causing. I know I've spoken about this topic in certain variations in the past, but the reason why I can bring stuff like this back up is because all of these societal phenomenons or occurrences are mutated. What was once one female rapper being really overt and sexual in new school hip hop has now mutated into every single mainstream female rapper participating in this. So it's not mind your business. It's not why are you judging other women? It's not being crucified for allegedly shaming women who are comfortable in their sexuality. It's not about that. It's about the fact that this imagery, whether you're young as a teenager or closer to 30, whether you're white or black, whether you're light skin or dark skin, whether you're educated or uneducated, as long as you're a woman who falls into this demographic, graphic that directly consumes this music, you're going to get labeled with this imagery. Also, if you are shaped a certain way, you are now almost considered someone who is a thought. If you are into hair and makeup and nails and lashes and fashion, you are now someone who participates in this thought culture. That's what society is putting out. And none of that is all the way true, of course, but that's what society wants us to think because we have blurred the lines between what fits into that mold of that culture. So because we've allowed for explicit imagery to become the norm, we've all kind of fallen into the perception, even if if it's just a small part of our interest. 
sucks, doesn't it? It does, but that's society. And that is kind of what women have done now in our generation. I think parts of the thought culture stuff is actually okay because like I said, part of it is authentic to certain audiences. And furthermore, it can be entertaining and done in a likable manner. But I think if women want to be taken seriously in their talents or career, even for the everyday woman, we have to express it in low dosages and even in moderation. So that can be toning down how far we go with it or keeping the energy, but only displaying it every so often or when it's appropriate to do so. My biggest issue is that kids really have access to this stuff and it's no one's job as a professional rapper or entertainer to change who they are for your child. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to blame or drag the city girls because your 12 year old little sister is prematurely doing the most with her sexuality. Yes, she may be influenced by Lotto or Nicki Minaj or anybody, but it's y'all job as parents, big sisters, big cousins, aunties, and even school teachers to not only try your best to restrict that imagery from being embodied at a young age but have conversations too. I wish someone would have told me at 14 or 15 not to be so sexually expressive or at least just make me understand that certain stuff was for mature audiences. The school year is starting back up so teachers, school administrators who watch me have me come out to your school. I'll even talk to the middle schoolers and the high schoolers about this stuff. Send me an email because I know this topic is always hard to convey to teenagers because social media is so rampant these days. They're going to see this stuff anyway when you're not around and kids and teens are always in a rush to grow up so caution them to understand what all of this stuff means Whew, it must be hard to be a parent all in all i think thought culture and thought music is kind of here to stay as it has always been a thing in hip-hop in regards to the female mcs i like it when it's necessary or just in doses that are easy to digest however it's rampant and it's very pronounced as of 2022 and it has trickled down to the general public in ways that i would have never guessed I see the future of this dwindling a little bit because artists like Coyle Ray, Glorilla, Lakia, Tierra Wack, No Name, Rico Nasty, and more are also offsetting some of it and being recognized a little bit more. So that is refreshing. Not to say we need to get rid of Cardi B and whoever else, but just to say that we have to balance out what we're viewing as well as understand that thought culture and thought music is a subgenre and mainly for entertainment and is not practical in real life. I'm interested to see if there will be a shift in female rap music and if the mainstream artists can actually give us a balance of other topics and not be so one trick pony all the time. Thought culture and thought music does have a negative effect whether you agree with it or not and that's just the god honest facts of the matter. Everyone from rappers to influencers to first ladies of the church to college students and even to middle school girls are seeing it and maybe participating in it so we just have to be cognizant of our image and understand the side effects of something that can be so fun and expressive and trendy can also be detrimental to our perception and our overall outlook. So that is it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. Please let me know your commentary on my commentary down below. What do you think? What do you know? Let me know. If you haven't already, go stream my new song, Ballin'. It is out on all platforms. I have more music on the way. Let me know what you think of my music as well. And also, don't forget to follow me on all my social media networks, and I will see you all in my next video. Bye, guys. Come on. One time for the melanin girls. Can you pop it in the sun? Let me hear you one time. Baby, let me hear you one time.